we go to webmail, we go to tools, options, security tab, we can now import this certificate from that PKCS12 format directly into ISOWARP webmail. So going to tool options, security, and then uploading will bring up an explorer dialog, and here is where we just need to find the certificate that we exported. So in, our, in my case, I named it new underscore secure. And now it's going to ask me for that phrase that I created when I exported from the browser. And that's it. Once I do that, I'm now able to sign any email that, that's outbound. And once I've created a trust relationship with anyone, meaning we've exchanged public and private keys, which I'll show now, I, I can then start encrypting my email any time I send to those users. So in the same vein, I actually have this secure account set up in Outlook. Now for Outlook, to do the same steps that I just did in webmail, you first need to go to Tools, and this is using Outlook 2007, Trust Center, Email Security, and then it's Import Export, and it's going to say Digital IDs is going to be the header. And here you just do the same thing. You're going to browse to the file. whatever the password is for that file, and then what you want the name of that account to be. So we're just going to say secure. It's going to ask you what level you want to set the, for, for the uh, crypto API. Do you want to do medium? Uh, that's the default, so I'm just going to say OK. And that's it. Now we'll see under default setting, I have an SMIME for secure at icewarp.com. So now from this point in Outlook, I'm able to sign any mail that I send out. So let me go ahead and send an email. And I'm going to go ahead and send it to unsecure at icewerp.com. And I'm going to make sure that it's signed. Now, if you try to encrypt the message before that trust relationship is set up, each client, Webmail, Outlook, or any other email client, uh, Thunderbird, in modern times, maybe uh, it's hard to speak for your door or some of the very old ones, but any modern client is going to tell you that you do not have a certificate for that user that you're trying to send to, so you would not be able to encrypt that mail to them. So first you have to sign it, and you're going to have to grant permission to that uh, key, the public key, that you're going to be sending that user. So say okay. And now that message is off. And if we come to the unsecure account here in webmail, We'll see there's a new message, and it, the same message I sent. Now, what you'll see is a little red ribbon, and this means that the message that was sent to you actually is digitally signed. And you can see it attached as an attachment now, public certificate. Now, the first thing you need to do to be able to create this trust relationship is create a contact for that sender. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and just automatically add them. So we'll create, we're creating a contact automatically from the message for secure at icewarp.com. Say OK. Now if we go to contacts, we see it's here. So once we move back to the message, click on the public certificate, and once you'll highlight it, right click, and you'll be presented with save, show certificate, or append to contact. So we know that we just created that certificate, so you can either show it here, who signed it, who it's issued to, to make sure it's valid. You can save it and keep it into, uh, you know, keep it into maybe a folder that you're saving these certificates in in case you lose your computer and you need to reinstall or something along those lines. And in this case, we're just going to append it directly to the contact. So once you choose append to contact, it'll open a contacts dialog folder. And if depending on where it might be, it might be in a different contact folder other, other than your default one. Uh, so you have the option to choose. So we're just going to go ahead and say secure. And now you're going to see a dialog box saying certificate was successfully added. It's going to bring back up the contact dialog box. And here we can just view and make sure that that certificate is indeed placed into this contact. So it is.
So now at this point, we have half of that trust relationship established. We now need to create the other half of that relationship by sending back the certificate from unsecure back to the secure account. So in this case, let's see if he has a certificate and he does not. So we're going to have to upload this. And I've already created that certificate. And once again, I have to establish the phrase. So now it's imported. Now I'm able to sign the mail. So I'm just going to reply to the message. Here is my public key. And I'm going to choose to sign the message. Now, once that message leaves, let's go back to Outlook. And if we go, uh, we're just send and receive. And we see it here. Here is my public key. And in Outlook, again, you'll see the red ribbon. Now I just let's see if we already have a contact for them, and we do. Let me remove this, and let me go back. And so in Outlook, it's the same vein. They actually do it a, a, a little more proficiently. They one click on the sender and telling it to add a contacts will pop up the contact window. And if we look at the certificates, we'll see it's automatically appended that certificate to them. So if we say save and close, you now have that contact created in Outlook with the certificate. So if a message comes in and it's signed and you do the add to contact, it automatically appends the certificate if there is a signed message and that certificate is attached. So at this point, we've now done a complete trust relationship between these two senders. So from here, I'm, let's go ahead and reply back. And this time we're going to encrypt it. You see it goes off. Now, we'll try to send it to a user that we do not have a valid relationship set up with, and, and we'll see the error that is generated then. But now if we go back to webmail, the unsecure account, we now see the message show up with a padlock. This actually means that the body of that message is going to be encrypted. So nobody would be able to see any of this trend, um, any of the replies, the original message, anything that's in this entire thread would not be uh, read in transit or by anyone that actually sees this message. So if we go to the actual folder, go to the mail, inbox, and 248, this would be it. Just tell it how to open. And what you'll see is just the May 64 code. So this is the actual message now. If someone were to get on the server, this is all they would see. Now, because you have their, their public facing key, you're able to decode this in webmail. So what you see here in this text is the exact same text that you that you would see if you tried to if you tried to, to view this on the server, and the the way you can tell outside of just the different base sixty four coding that it's actually encrypted is you'll see content type, and then you'll see s mime for the content type. So that's how you know that this message itself has been encrypted. Now, if we try to look at another message that was not encrypted, you can see everything. Every, every piece of the text, everything along those lines. So that's the big difference. Now, as I said, if we go back to Outlook and we try to send a message encrypted to someone that we do not have a trust relationship with, you're going to be presented with a, an error. Uh, we'll just say private.
And you're going to see it has problems encrypting this message because the recipient does not have a certificate installed into your client. So you cannot send encrypted unless you have that certificate for the recipient that you're sending to. Now, the other thing that I, I found useful when I've done this for customers is to actually show them how easy it is for someone to sniff that traffic in between the sender and the recipient and maybe this, you know, with the server. Uh, so what I have here is just a sniffing program called ComView, uh, Wireshark, vir uh, vis Visual Sniffer, I believe, is another one. So there, there's definitely multiple applications that do this now that are available. This is actually just one of the better ones that I've ever seen. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what the difference looks like sending through the same methods that we did from Outlook to Webmail and vice versa. And let's see what it looks like when it's secure and, and unsecure. And this is what somebody could see if, if they were doing any type of packet sniffing inside of your network. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm just doing it on the loopback address. And let's go ahead and send one not secure. Now we see it's populated with some packets. And let's see what this looks like. If you see, it's the full communication. What I like about this packet sniffer in particular is it builds the, t the actual sessions in full instead of keeping them in single packets. So if you're looking for one, this is uh, one I would definitely recommend. So the full session from sending that message, this is exactly everything that transpired. Now, Outlook and some other programs can be made to automatically encrypt the password. So that's why we're not seeing that here. Uh, but there's a lot of clients that do send them in plain text. So in this case, uh, the auth is done in digest, MD5. So it's actually encrypted. So there is a little protection. At least they're not going to be able to get your, your password. But as we look, they're going to be able to see the entire message. The from, the to, anyone could read this, the body of the message, the subject. So it's in plain view for them. And it's that, it's that simple, two seconds to do. So now if somebody is doing this and they're actually encrypting the message, And this time we're going to tell it to encrypt it. And let's see what that looks like now. Okay. So this should be the new transaction. Subject. Yes, this message is encrypted. And as opposed to the last one, as you can see, there is nothing that we can see for that message itself. Now, it, as talked about during the server security webinar, if this was performing an SSL connection to the server, then none of this could be read once it entered TLS or uh, SSL communication. So not even, uh, not even the authentication or anything like this would be seen if the actual connection was SSL. But as I mentioned in the beginning, Actually encrypting and using personal certificates protects you from even the possibility of the server or maybe the administrator of the server not actually applying any of the security rules that protect you. Uh, so by encrypting your own email, you take the matters into your own hands to protect your, your data when you send it. And as you can see, it literally takes seconds to, to pull apart packets that you're sending back and forth. Okay, well, that's going to do it for today's webinar.